It was the most complex criminal prosecution I've ever handled, on top of which it had two juries. It was a death penalty case, which is complicated in and of itself. Uh, one of the defendants had confessed and implicated the other defendant, and so you had the problem that he could not be forced to testify, so the other defendant could not cross-examine him on that. So you had to pick two juries, one who would hear the confession and one who wouldn't. There were just a lot of legal issues you had to worry about on a case like this, not to mention the, just the length of it. Four and a half months, you're bound to lose some jurors along the way. Every day there were issues that would come up. You know, jurors had employers who were upset that they weren't showing up at work and were threatening to fire them, and I had to deal with those issues so that you wouldn't lose a juror. And then when you get to the end of the case and you've got two juries, you've got two juries who have a right to look at the evidence. And so where does the evidence go? And you had to come up with a system for jurors to look at all of the evidence and the other jury be able to see it as well when they weren't looking at it. Um, keep the jurors separate because they couldn't communicate with each other. That could result in a mistrial. I think the greatest challenge was the jurors. As a former cop, as a, a judge, I've seen really difficult, gruesome cases. But we're asking 35 people who are moms and teachers and just individuals who don't normally get exposed to that kind of viciousness to come in here, not only listen to it, but look at some of the most graphic, disturbing pictures that I can say I've ever seen as a judge. Um, so I think the biggest challenge was theirs, and uh, they did an amazing job. The jurors in this trial were my heroes.